2019 is the International Year of Indigenous Languages and around the world there will be a focus on the cultures of First Nations. In Cape Town there will be two major events that put the spotlight on the, on the Khoi and the San Nations of South Africa. First scheduled for the end of January is the premiere of the landmark film Ruibos Restitution that tells the story of the historic victory of the Khoi and the San people for recognition of their traditional knowledge with regards to Ruibos. Then a week later it will be the premiere of a musical theatre play entitled Kortua Eva van der Kapp, a story of a young Khoi woman who grew up in the household of Jan van Riebeck and puts her firmly in charge of her own narrative. And with us in studio this morning to talk about these two groundbreaking creative works is the director of the film Roybos Restitution, Silva Vollenhoven, who is also the author of the play Khortua Eva van der Kapp. Silva, a very good morning to you and welcome. Thank you, Simperian. Great stuff. Now, let's start with the film, Roybos Restitution. I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is uh, tea, yet uh, <laughs> a historic battle has been going on behind the scenes. Roybos is so much more than just a tea. Um, in recent times, research has shown, you know, that there are tremendous health benefits and even more research is being done about uh, w the various uses as to, to uh, regards to rooibos. But what is important about this story is that up there in the Siedeberg Mountains, you know, far away from, from the spotlight, people have been working with lawyers and, and other NGOs and supporters and funders to fight an amazing battle to get recognition for something that is entirely intangible, traditional knowledge. You know, we grew up with this stuff, we drank it and our grandmothers told us how good it is yeah. for you. But we didn't realize that that was intellectual property. That was traditional knowledge and it has a value so the lawyers especially from an organization called natural justice have come together with the people and um, um, formulated a, a legal claim and they've actually won the government also did a landmark study called the TK um, study the traditional knowledge study and and that came out unequivocally in favor of the fact that the Khoi and the Sun are the traditional knowledge holders with regard to rooibos and, and honeybush. You know, g given the recent tragedy of the Wurpatal village, which has been uh, destroyed by a fire, and most of the film has been shot in the historic hamlet, so how does this, uh, this kind of influence a story uh, being told in the film? Well, the... the we were preparing to have the premiere of the film. Um, at the same time, this tragic fire broke out in, in, during the festive season in, in December last year. Um, and now what the funders and, and natural justice, the lawyers working with these issues, have decided is to, instead of just having the, the premiere and screenings around South Africa as they had been planning, but they will use the premiere as a fundraiser for the, for the devastated village because there are all kinds of issues that come to the foreground now. One of those issues is the fact that the people in Vipital do not own the land on which they live and on which they grow the rooibos for the entire world. Mm -hmm. So um, the film is being used, the premiere is being used as a fundraiser um, people can go to web tickets, get their ticket, even if they can't go. It's just 150 rand, which they can then donate to the people of Vipital who are struggling to rebuild their lives, their heritage and their village. So when you are done with making this film, you began writing your latest play. So how did this collaboration between Artscape in Cape Town and uh, Volks Opera Hayes in the Netherlands come about? Well, the Volks Opera Hayes in the Netherlands has been coming to South Africa. Representatives have been coming to South Africa, you know, to, to look at... Um, um, possibilities for collaboration. And they were at the Kaka Inka, the Klein Kuru um, Arts Festival, some time ago. Met up with Basil Apollos, who's the director of um, this play and most of the plays that I've written. Uh, and expressed an interest in wanting to do a story about Kritoa. Um, there was lots of discussions between Basil Apollos and Jeff Hofmeister of the Folks Opera Hayes, as well as... Um, the guy who plays Van Riebeck in, in um, this production, uh, Keir Skolton and, and another guy. And they, in their discussions, they decided, let's not repeat history. Re let's not have the story of this amazing woman again being written by men. Yeah. And so Basil very specifically decided to bring me on board to, to write the play and uh, <coughs> Sorry. And that's how the collaboration started. Artscape, the CEO at Artscape, Marlene LaRue, 
was very specific. She said to the folks who praise people, I'll only get involved if Basel policy is interested. And so when Basel was interested and said, well, I'll only get involved if Sylvia writes it. Wow. And that's how the collaboration came about. You know, Sylvia, there's been so many stories being told about the, the young woman, Crotoria, uh, who, who lived in the household of Jan van Driebeek. How does this one in particular stand out? Well, what I have been very clear about in the writing is that this is Kritoa's story. She should have agency. She must be firmly in charge of her own narrative. So the story is told from her perspective. As a Khoi woman, um, history doesn't tell narratives from our perspective, right? Um, all around the world, First Nations people are marginalized, but First Nations women are most marginalized. So what we've done is to restore her power and give her the agency to tell the story from her point of view. Mm. And how will the International Year of Indigenous Languages benefit uh, South Africa's First Nations? Well, on the point of marginalization, which I've, I've just mentioned, this kind of focus from the United Nations gives us an opportunity, um, a very clear political opportunity, to put certain issues on the table and to get attention. Marginalization isn't just a word. It is something very real. It is something people live with every day. And, and the ills that started with colonialism, the devastation of Jan van Riebeek's strategies in the 1600s, is still felt by people all around me today. Um, for instance, just, just one example, it was very clear part of his strategy to use alcohol. He fed it even to young children. Kritoa, as a young child, was given alcohol. Um, it was also part of his strategy to use tobacco and to enslave people so that he could barter, so that he could get goods for better prices. Um, the cattle that he needed for fresh meat for the ships passing, the fresh produce that they needed, all of these things. And, and so when you look at communities today and you see the devastation of alcoholism and addiction, you can take it right back to there, you know. One of his ideas was to build an arm and hedge to separate the colonials from the local people. Uh -huh. That became the first act of apartheid. So, so this International Year of Indigenous Languages helps us to put the focus on, on the issues that we are dealing with, but also the fact that um, we have an indigenous language on the coat of arms of, of South Africa, but nowhere is there any indigenous languages being taught in the school. There's a huge, huge movement to get Khoi Khoi Hovap back into the schools, the Khoi Khoi language. And, and this kind of focus helps us to, to, to boost those uh, uh, efforts. Wow. Sylvia, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Krotoa Eva van der Kapp is on at the Artscape Arena from the 7th of February to the 16th. Uh, booking are now on CompuTicket. We've just been speaking to the director of the film Robo's Restitution, Silva Follenhoven, who is also uh, the, uh, the author of the play Krotoa Eva van der Kapp. Let's take a short break. We'll be right back. <laughs>